All right, guys, in today's video, we're working on this Ecotec 1.4 liter turbocharged engine, and we're tackling some oil leaks. The oil leak we're going to tackle today is coming from the camshaft cover, all right? So you can see all down here, what we've got is leaks all around the seam as we go around this guy. Now, before you take this off, there's a possibility that you can get this fixed under extended warranty with GM. They had so many problems with this camshaft cover and the little uh, bypass vent valve I'm going to show you in a minute that they were doing a recall campaign or not a recall but a special campaign where they would fix this under extended warranty. Click the video up in the upper right to see if your vehicle is covered by that extended warranty. Assuming it's not, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a trim tool and we're going to go pop this decorative cover off. We're going to need to remove our ignition coil so that's why we pulled that out we're going to pop that out with a t30 so we got two t30s holding this on once we remove these two t30s we can lift this out we don't need to disconnect it or anything like that we just need to get it out of the way Just wiggle your spark plug boots off and you can sit it over to the side. The next thing we're going to end up doing is we've got a number of these external Torx bit fasteners that are holding this guy on. So we're going to take those off with an E10. So I'm going to go around here and remove all these E10s and we'll come back when we've got that done. Alright guys, after you get all 15 of these bolts loose, they don't come out because they're captive to the cover. Next thing we want to do is we want to work this harness out of these retainers all the way around so that we can be able to separate this piece. This one's in here kind of tight. Just want to get that kind of peeled back a little bit. Now this one's got like a, a little retainer on it. We'll have to get a flathead to pop that open so we can remove that. Then we can take this one off of here. Now be real careful with this piece because the plastic on this particular hose tends to be really brittle and it can break on you. Just want to separate that off as well. And we're going to take the dipstick out because that's also going through this cover. So let's put this away and let's go ahead and get a flathead. We'll come back and do that. All right, now we're going to take a small little pocket pry bar or a flathead and we're going to get this connector to open up. I'm just trying to be super gentle guys because all like I said all this plastic is mucho brittle. Okay now we still got this piece over here. There's tabs if we zoom in at the corners here and you don't need to see it necessarily. It's the same on both sides. There's tabs on both sides. There's tabs in the middle here and here. And there's tabs at the end. And the chance of it breaking is pretty high. So for this particular repair where we're just changing out the gasket, we're just going to leave this on here. And we're just going to try and pivot it over. We're going to try it like that. So now I've gone in here off camera and I've used compressed air to blow any debris out around here and around the edges. So now what I just want to try and do is I want to see if I can start to get a spot where this guy might let go. So I'm going to start right around this little bracket here. And what I might have to do is uh, get like a uh, little mallet. Let me try that. So guys, what I've done is I've just gone around here with a rubber mallet, lightly tapping on this thing. And remember, it's plastic and it's old and brittle. And we're just watching, if you zoom in here where the oil is leaking, and we can see it moving now. So now that we see the oil moving, we know we've got a weak spot. So I'm going to come in on this flat area and just start working on that. All right. And we're just going to keep working on this until we can get one corner to let go. very slowly so that we don't damage or break anything. And you'll make sure that all your bolts are all the way out, that you can lift them up like that. 
so that nothing's holding it down. Go all the way around and make sure everything is completely loose. Like I said, they'll stay captive, but you don't want anything holding on because that's what's going to lead to something breaking. So we'll come back when I can get this worked up. All right, guys, so this was our weak spot, and we've just been slowly kind of working on this. We're finally making some progress here. Slowly getting this guy to separate off. It's just uh, all entombed on here because it hasn't been replaced since it was assembled back in 2012. So I'm just going to keep working it off nice and slow. We don't want to crack anything. We don't want to bend anything on this plastic because we want to just pop a gasket on and reuse it. So when we get it a little bit further, we'll come back. All right, guys, we've got her separated and ready to come out. But I'm worried about this PVC line that runs over from where our PVC bypass valve is over to the turbocharger. So we're going to go ahead and remove this to prevent it from getting broken. So we're going to come up here and release this little clamp there, little clip rather. And if we zoom in, I'm going to push out this metal retainer here. right there. And then I'm going to work this off the uh, PVC connector like so. This is also a good chance to look down in there and make sure your PVC little orange bypass valve is in place. Uh, I'll link another video up here in the uh, upper right that you can see. And check that out while you're in here. All right, so with that disconnected, we got this uh, another small vacuum line. It's down here. We'll have to move the camera over on the other side for you to see this. Let's go ahead and reposition. All right, so we've got this little vacuum line over here. I think we'll be fine with him. We can slip this cover right out from underneath that, but I am going to disconnect it over here as well at the turbocharger. Find a place for our flashlight. And on this guy, there's a ring here that you press on the sides where it's serrated. Right there. You press it on both of these, and that should release this. Let's see. There, okay. All right, so now we've got some slack on this line, and I'm less worried about it breaking. Now let's see if we can actually get this guy out of here with all this out of the way. All right, there we go. This is all we wanted to do, guys. All right, so we reposition our camera back over on this other side. You want to keep everything nice and clean at this point because you've got your two cams exposed. But now on this side of the gasket here, we can see this gasket is just all brittle and falling apart, right? So this was the source of this leak. So we're going to have to work this all off of here and then replace it. And you're going to have to be careful because there's little pieces breaking off and falling down. You don't want any of that to fall into the engine. We'll get those pieces that drop down there. So let me get this old gasket out of here. We'll get some brake clean up here and clean this up, and then we'll come back and put the new one in. All right, guys, so the general technique, I'm just about done with the engine cylinder head side. The general technique is brake clean, and you're just trying to go where the gasket goes. We certainly want to get all of the residual oil off, but we also want to get any dried up material from the gasket. You can use a carbide scraper, but you've got to be really careful on this aluminum head. Real light rubbing, right? So we get a little bit of material off like that. We're just going to use this just to get sure, get sure that we don't have any residual gasket material clinging to the cylinder head. So we're just going to go around, continue like that, in preparation for resealing it. 
All right, so for our cover, very similar technique. Just wrapping this up here. You can fold your rag over, soak it with some brake clean, and just work it inside the grooves where the gasket is going to sit. You want to get it all cleaned up inside there to where you don't have any residual oil. So, you know, you're going to go all the way around along the middle and all the way around the side. And then we're going to go around the outside as well. So that way we'll be able to spot if we have any new leaks by cleaning up all the material from the old leaks. So let me get this prepped and we'll come back and go over the new gasket. All right, we're ready to put our new gasket in. It's a GM2519873 for this particular series of the 1.4 liter turbo. This is the earlier kind of LUV RPO, LLV type. And you can see this gasket is supposed to be very supple and soft. Or you can just bundle it up in your hand. Right? Now compare that to a few pieces that we took off. Right? These are cracking like Kit Kats. So gasket's not supposed to be like a Kit Kat. All right. So now we're going to work this guy in. And so what you'll see on here is there's like a flat top and a narrow piece. And the narrow piece is what sits inside the camshaft cover. So we'll just get it started by hand. And then we'll tap it in with a little rubber hammer after we get done. If needed, sometimes you can just get it in with your fingers. Not wanting to slip into this little passage here for some reason. Not sure why. Ah, got a little piece of old gasket material sitting in here how we missed that but you guys are getting to see it live yep little tiny piece of the old gasket material was preventing us from getting a good seal so you want to watch out for that happens to the best of us all right so now with that all out of the way we can get everything to seat properly all right, so there's more to it than just doing this and flipping it over, though. So let's pull out the service manual and see what else we have to do. So we're using the 2012 cruise service manual, but this will apply to 2011, 13, 14, 15 as well with the same engine. And it'll also apply to this engine on the Sonic uh, and the Trax, as well as the Buick Encore. Any of them that have this 1.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder uh, from that same year period. So for installing this, we're going to have to um, da -da 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 -da, clean the surfaces, apply sealing compound to compound areas one and two where these seams are, and the thickness of that sealing bead should be two millimeters. We're going to be using this AC Delco RTV engine sealant for that purpose. And if we zoom in over here, what they're talking about is this seam right here. So before you put this guy down, that is prone to leaking. And so they're wanting you to apply a small bead of this material into this area. Now I'll fix that up with the pick before we put it down. But we're going to do that same thing on this back seam right there as well. And then the next thing that they tell you you can do is then you can get your gasket and your cover put together. So they conveniently let you know it shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes to do this. And then they're probably going to tell us the uh, torque value. So we've got an order of tightening that we have to do in this particular sequence. So 
we'll kind of zoom in on this so that you guys can see this. So, you know, one and then two and then three and then four, right? You want to follow this sequence to 71 inch pounds just the way they have it here. And then they go over putting the wiring harnesses back into their snap positions and that sort of thing, right? So this is the 1.4 liter with any of these RPO codes inside your glove box. L2I, L2N, LDD, LUH, LUJ, and LUV. And it will also apply to the 1.2 liter with these three RPO codes. So let me go ahead and get our uh, sealant over on that back bead and we'll flip her over and we'll go through the sequence. All right, so before we flip it over, we're just going to take a little rubber hammer. Just going to make sure we've got this thing sitting where it's not going to pop out while we flip it over because we don't want it to get kinked where we can't see it. All right, now we can flip her over. Just work your hoses out of the way and any other obstructions. Make sure these bolts are not dropping down and getting in your way. All right, so if we did not pinch any hoses, we should be in a position where we can start to hand tighten these, these bolts. And that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to get one of them done here by hand. So now we can come back around. Before we do that torque sequence, we're just going to snug them very gently. Very gently. All right, we just want to get a couple of them down just to make sure everything's seating okay and that we haven't accidentally pinched anything. So I'm going to go around and do that, and then we'll come back and torque everything up. All right, guys, we're just finishing up 14 and 15. All right, those are all torqued to 71 inch pounds. Put our dipstick back in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go reconnect the uh, PVC hose that we took off. Put it back inside of its little clip here. Yeah, I gotta get this little piece to fit there like that. You just want to be super gentle with it so that it doesn't break. On the other side where we took it off over there. Click, snap, snap, lock. This guy here, I don't think I got quite right just yet. I might just pull this back out again with our little pick. If I can find it, we'll come back to that. I, I'm going to pull that back out and snap him on. Lift this guy back here and get him in. Get this guy back in. It looks like we got to pull it off anyway, guys, because we messed this up. This has got to come up and over. All right, then our little clip popped out, of course. Probably would have been an easier way to get rid of it. And we'll see how this snaps back on. Now we can get this guy back in there. All right, so all I got left to do is uh, get my little pry bar to do that snap. We'll put our ignition coil back in, and then we're just going to go over one more time and make sure that we didn't miss anything. And then I'll come back and I'll go over some of this uh, final material here. All right, guys, we got this uh, snapped back in here. I had to get my pry bar to pull that little bar out, snap him back in. 
A little bit of motor oil around the snout makes it easier to go on. This is a tip for that. Now we're going to put the ignition coil back in. Just make sure you got the boots all aiming into the spark plugs correctly. Go ahead and get your original T30 bolts. Put them back in and we're going to torque those guys back down the same torque as the bolts that are holding on the uh, cover which is 71 inch pounds. We're going to go ahead and do that. Not necessarily going to you know, film that whole thing here. I hope that you found this an useful video for you to repair this type of leak on your Ecotec 1.4 liter. If you found some questions in watching it or you got some comments or concerns, put them down below. I'll try to respond and help. If it did save you some time and money and you found it useful, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.